earlier, I had the chance to speak with Thomas Lee, managing partner and the head of research now. at Fundstrat Global you know, Advisors. We touched on the Fed as well as El Salvador and if the recent cash, pullback in Bitcoin could amount to another crypto yield. winter. Have today listen. we have a $500 million software business growing 10% a year and a $5 billion come a long dollar way Bitcoin in terms business of the that's been growing north of 100% a year. The, the expansion so of our strategy is to acquire I think the institutional sort of the ownership market, is do growing, but it's still quite with small. Um, with, uh, and debt, I think the, the quality and also of the companies and, and flows just the people involved, I mean, it's grown uh, a lot. We so saw I think this in some ways, opportunity. Uh, we sold, I do think a crypto uh, winner is happening, but quarter, about I would still think that worth of 2020 still looks more like 2017, that, uh, us to meaning we're still in the middle of, I think, a pretty big up move so we try to choose our spots. Are you still predicting 100,000 you know, you Bitcoin 10, by the end Bitcoin of the year, or where, where's the, or 100 million? Because I'm talking to Thomas Lee, so you know, you, you never know. Yeah, uh, when it goes yeah, to I a think million, Bitcoin can. It's a lot know, of lot it's, of money. It's roughly 45,000 uh, today. I think it, it could There's easily no get to 100,000 before your end. But I think that's in the context of what we see as a bigger move in financial markets. So I think equities are probably going to rally into the end of the year, and that takes up crypto and you know longer term. Um, again, it's a and yet value there's asset. obviously so a looming regulatory grows. crackdown. Take a you listen know, to this from can get to, SEC you know, the chair, half a million, a million in a few years as well. Mm -hmm. What do you see happening with the Fed and can COVID can be the, um, you know, I think it's best, uh, Senator, they the may surprise. Well be we, we don't know what's going to happen with COVID. But the, the, the Fed has been talking about tapering and we have central banks around the world talking about it, but slowly moving towards it perhaps. But how do you think that will impact markets? Like it's not a security. Now, maybe you've got a good argument for why some are and some aren't. My whole point is, want to do is, you know, one, we're only one year into an expansion. Michael, so are it's you really all early for the Fed to, regulators could to try to normalize policy. And I know investors are kind of, of the market. you know, think it's appropriate because there's I inflation that, risk. Um, but the big winner COVID of that is entire still uncertain is and it affects how the, companies the are making decisions. It's affecting policymakers and it's certainly affecting what the Fed's doing. So, you know, we're, on the, we're in the camp that the Fed's more dovish Bitcoin than the market realizes a -term store because the Fed's uncertain and, 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 and an uncertain Fed is actually good for markets Congress, because Senate, a dovish Fed means financial assets can still go up. And so for companies that you're advising who are entering the crypto space, we're hearing a lot about funds, all grants, the lot of these developments. Uh, what are you advising them um, in terms the of should they be of, well, going into Bitcoin or exploring some altcoins? The the uh, when we Western talk world. to institutions uh, and, and they want to think about their exposure, and I think they're Senator still Tuna going to take an approach that, that has that, broad exposure. Uh, we would all so from owning clarity, Bitcoin uh, and Ethereum make a lot of sense. But there's a lot of great projects out there, including Solana. And, you know, believe it or not, many are interested in also getting involved with, in the very earlier stages of things that are either DeFi related or NFTs. So I think there's broad interest. It's just, there's a lot of noise and there's a lot of opportunities. And I don't think they expect to have the same return. Bitcoin, because these are all inequities, good which means for the industry. They might have more what projects fail, but SEC? the potential when return you is see, much greater. You know, the biggest crypto and when you hear out there of countries taking like El Salvador the SEC, making Bitcoin you know, legal tender, we have Ukraine talking about making Bitcoin legal tender. Right what are your thoughts well, I mean, uh, when you see that emerging? Is, uh, the largest, uh, um, Publicly it's, listed, it's important to watch, uh, but it's in the fraught United with States. a lot of problems because, and, um, and, you know, uh, some of these the nations have a dollarization issue, you know, or they're so highly in debt, or their the regime isn't considered like stable, clarity um, so out it raises of, the risk uh, of either money laundering so they can um, out what they can do or being home to, it, you know, faster. people who are and trying I to think get FinCEN and regulation. I think it's got a mixed effect, but over time, if it can actually bring some of these nations I think the, the fact and maybe the citizens out of poverty or democratized finance, it's thing. actually a good thing. So Coinbase I think it's just worth watching. Uh, it doesn't uh, offer the same range of We also have the SEC that, uh, you can uh, get from Chair Gary Gensler appearing before the Senate uh, and, uh, on Tuesday. Uh, what are you anticipating like coming out of the regulators in the United industry, States as they start investigating DeFi, even Coinbase in their crosshairs? And if all the rules are clarified for everyone and everyone by the same rules, I think difficult to predict what regulators will do. 
you know, Meantime, they tend Solana, to take, they tend to watch, take a lot of notes. Having been on a tear, they don't have to be in a rush. Seas, and then when they make a decision, it's going to be decisive. So NFTs on I think one of the best things that the industry should do is try not to antagonize regulators. But it's, it's very uncertain. And Gary Gensler is, you know, is, is very well, educated on crypto. Well, in the market, there are three things. So it's not as if he doesn't understand the space. Right. Everyone thought, well, he taught courses on blockchain, cryptocurrencies at MIT. IT, everyone thought that he was be crypto friendly, and so, uh, but with value. these uh, investigations, everyone is have, uh, pretty unicorns. uncertain. Um, the so finally, the when you're looking and the forward and like the uh, to Airbnbs the United States, the, there's been questions the about whether or not Bitcoin could become the global reserve of currency of the world. Of Any thoughts on that? And there's a lot of maybe you would get into those um, kind of businesses, and we don't know how those stories end. I would say and then Bitcoin the adoption, I think, is right, or the six thousand somewhat unstoppable now that are, um, that are, because it's uh, so widely held and it's future. Um, and I think they're all competing really in a world where there's some murkiness about but to topple uh, about the dollar is a tall order. Um, Micro strategy, obviously, so that's part only of the uncertainty. I, 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 I think if you're an institutional investor, the, camp, the only the institutional great asset, asset sort of the, the only dominant currency, asset but you can invest in Bitcoin, Bitcoin just for the reasons you pointed out. Reserve asset. And I think that uh, that the but SEC is justified in that having an interest in the space for all up the reasons you point in out. And uh, to uh, the extent well, you know, that they clarify don't the store rules gold, of the road, so I think it's going to make it a, a safer, it more make welcoming a lot of sense environment for, for retail investors really and also for institutional investors. And I think Jeremy Lair and, and the panel today made a great point, which is, you know, way. when you look at stable coins like USDC, have demonstrators in El Salvador it's really much more useful for micropayments um, than dollars. Because, you know, in dollars, the smallest unit is a penny, but with, you know, with USDC, it can be fractionalized. So what's your take on what this kind of resistance mean and just... It's still, it'll, country, it'll be interesting to see how this all plays out. But I, I think the dollar stays around. But well, I think, I think of first of all, uh, the big news here is 500,000 people in terms of stable coins and, and cryptocurrencies, uh, when you have negative Bitcoin rate wallet, environments, does that pose a, a more attractive extraordinary place to put your assets in the and your world. money? And it indicates uh, yeah, just how rapidly um, Bitcoin and with, lightning when, can spread. When it comes to negative rates, I think, that, I think the best uh, way to look at it is in El Salvador the and level politics, of interest rates, right? There's an opposition inflation. party in the country. So negative There's rate. opposition and parties in every single state of the union in every last country in the years, world. And, the US and so was if the government real takes one position, there's going to be an opposition to that position. So we could be in for 10 years to see that. But I, I think that the way That's to think about Bitcoin is digital Bitcoin assets. So I is think the this most is a great disruptive technology and digital.